Hi guys, I'm Shmi. Hello and welcome back to the channel where you join me today with the Stradman to talk about this his GMC Hummer EV. Now James is going to be joining me in just a moment to go through this truck to understand all about it and to go out for a drive because of course we are here at his dream house, his new garage with my car that's going to be parked up and staying here. There's actually some construction going on outside right at this moment for next stages of the build but I want to find out about this thing, the first edition of the Hummer EV, a marked change from previous Hummers that started as military vehicles with one that's fully electric, weighing over 9,000 pounds, over 4,100 kilos. You can take off the roof panels. It can crab walk. It makes some extraordinary sounds, has all sorts of clever graphics and does so much more as well. And knowing quite little about these, I need James to show me the ropes, to talk it through, to understand why he went for this, why he added one of these to his collection of cars. So let's do it today with the Stradman, the Hummer EV. James, you're back. We are indeed. <laughs> and we're talking Hummer today, but- Yes, we are. We've got another visitor. We do, Oscar, Oscar. <laughs> buddy. <laughs> yeah, Sid, be a good boy. <laughs> Give me a paw. Find me a paw. <laughs> no, it's very it's hard to pour up. Oh, 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 yeah, good job, Oscar. <laughs> good job. So, Oscar, Hummer, I see some similarities. I here. got it paint a sample Oscar White. Oscar White. That's so, what I tell everybody, at least. So, let's talk about this first edition Hummer EV. Yes. Have you ever owned any previous Hummer? No, I haven't. Okay, so going into it with the electric, you have had a few electric cars. I know you've had some Teslas along the way. I had a Tesla Model 3. Yeah. And that's it actually. Just one so this is this is my second EV. Uh-huh. Okay. Yeah. So what made you choose this? I mean, you're you're a Lambo guy. Big time. So growing up, the Hummer H1 was the coolest truck in the entire world. Absolutely loved it. My dream was to have that in a Lamborghini side by side, like a Diablo okay. and an H1 Hummer in game. The H2 Hummer, the H3, eh, they were all right. They were cool, but like this as soon as I saw the press release, I immediately fell in love. I immediately put down a deposit because I think it just looks so cool from a styling standpoint. And it's EV. It's got, I mean, the numbers on this thing are insane. Thousand horsepower in it an EV. No Zero to 60 in three seconds. Something weighs 9,000 pounds. It's the coolest EV, I think, in the world. And I'm not just saying that because I have one. I truly so, think that. Obviously, at this point, I've not spent significant time around it but I am feeling the cool factor. Yes. And that's something that is quite important these days because lots of these cars are better than you ever need them to be, right? 100%, oh, totally. This thing is such overkill, but it's like futuristic. Whereas like the Teslas, I'm not trying to knock the Teslas, they just don't have the soul. Whereas I feel like this has a soul, it's futuristic, it looks insane, it's off-roading. I mean, it's just, it's sick. The design is all a bit, strange you know the shoulder line is like at literally our shoulder uh -huh. yeah, yeah, and you have yeah. these really narrow bits of glass yeah it's a huge can, truck you can take off all of the roof panels yep as uh -huh. i understand it and then they stow away in the front they do that's actually a storage space yep. and we can open this up if you'd like i think maybe maybe i like the way the front's all illuminated it should open at the moment did i do that right oscar's maybe i did like that us. wrong oscar's come to have a look pop it open there we go there, there we, we go, go. Motorized front storage, full of stuff. <laughs> <laughs> this is all the stuff brand new from the dealership. This thing only has like 800 plus miles on it. Yeah. I haven't driven it a ton, but uh, it's such a cool truck. And the thing is, the roof panels stow away in there. Yep. So I know it's a tri-motor, three motors, a thousand horsepower, just over a thousand pounds foot of torque, which means zero to 60 miles an hour, as you said, is three seconds dead in a car that weighs 9,063 pounds, which is 4,100 kilos. <laughs> it is the craziest experience. We gotta do launch control today because the momentum, the force yeah. that this thing generates, like when you're in a lightweight car going that fast, I don't know, it just feels normal. This thing, considering how heavy it is, you can feel it and the whole truck squats down, lifts the front end, lifts up. Oscar, what are you doing, bud? Having a bit of a sniff. Yeah, you like the Hummer, don't you? Yes, you do. <laughs> so let's have a quick look inside here. Oscar's like, that's my place to go. What's <laughs> happening in here? It's still quite rugged. You know, things like the grab handles, the design, the, mm -hmm. the general setup. Slap in some big screens, big glass roof panels up top. It's like, and this is the only way you could spec the first edition, isn't it? it yeah, there was like very this. few options. So they all came in white. There was no interior options. I think the only options I have are these front 
lights right here. Yep. And then this rear tire. And then I have a Bluetooth speaker in the tailgate. That's it. A Those Bluetooth. were the only, there was like three options. But and they offer it. you a Bluetooth speaker in the tailgate. Uh-huh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Back here, I mean, because this, this is, is the, the pickup, technically, is the first iteration. They yep. said they're gonna make an SUV as well, didn't they? Yep, they did, yeah. So right oh, see. here is a Bluetooth oh. speaker, and that's the third option. So I, see. I guess this car is fully optioned, every single option, I checked every single box. Because the first edition basically includes everything. Yep, exactly. Oh, so, so hold on, I'm just getting my head around this. There's a fold out Bluetooth speaker in the tailgate. There's a spare wheel, which does it look like it kind of moves around a bit, or you can slide it across or something, or it's just stored there. In it's the back. just stored there. You, there's actually, you could put another one on the other side if you gotcha. want to. Mm -hmm. Gotcha, gotcha, so you can bolt in another one. Um, when the SUV comes, that will be boxed off, but it just has kind of lights everywhere, like up top, mm -hmm. things, yeah. and the same around the front, things that just make it look a little bit crazy. Well, I mean, just the details in the tail lights, for example. Yeah. Oh, even They're the, just, the yeah, Hummer, the Hummer EV, insignia right there. Every detail in this truck is really, really cool. I think, I remember it being launched because I went to have a look at it at SEMA. I think it was SEMA last year. Mm -hmm. was yeah. There. yeah, they had the SUV there it. as well. I remember seeing it there and being like, this just makes so little sense to Welcome me. to the United States of America, right? Yeah, <laughs> This thing is so wide, it wouldn't fit on the roads in Europe. I and mean, it's so it wide, wouldn't... it needs a third windscreen wiper. Uh-huh, yeah. How do, we, how do you close this right now? Let's see, let's somewhere. see. Um... Press the magic button down there and hopefully, there we, yeah, go. there we go. I'm still learning everything about this truck. I should know more. So we'll but yeah, the windscreen, it. three windshield wipers. <laughs> it's only because the, look how, Short yeah, it is. So they can't it's like a long, foot tall. Yeah, exactly. Long blades. Mm -hmm. And again, those lights up top. It's quite the unusual machine. So I guess we should probably get it unplugged. Let's do it. Yeah, we're at a hundred percent right now too, which yeah. is kind of unique for me. I'm still, I still need to install the full charger here at the new house. Yeah. So right now we just have the 110 power just in like a standard outlet. So it doesn't charge very quick. This is kind of like an emergency charge, but because my house is like a mess so, right now. I mean, I don't know if you know, but 212 kilowatt hour battery in here. Okay, I didn't know that. Which is more than double a Tesla Plaid. Crazy. The weight of the battery in there, they don't, they don't quote an official number uh -huh. anywhere, but it's probably not too like dissimilar from that car. Right, the entire <laughs> car. The batteries in this weigh the entirety of a Lamborghini event. It will be that That's kind of crazy. thing. That's yeah. crazy. Yeah. That kind of thing. All right, let's pull it out. Let's go uh, let's do it. what this is like. Oh yeah, gotta close up the tailgate and all of that. Um, go experience the Hummer EV pickup truck. Out it rolls, silently of course, electric world. Off we go. We're on 100% battery. We are. 139 miles range, that's not too bad. It's not bad and I've actually tested that and it's fairly accurate. Yeah. I have not towed with this before though, but lots of launches. I did 330 miles on my first charge okay, when I launches. first got it. Launching this must drain that fast. It does, but that was, I did, got 330 miles of range with probably 10 launches, okay, which is amazing. Interesting. Yeah. I mean, you would expect some good range given the whole weight of everything. And sitting in here, it's quite funny because it, it's massive. It's so wide. It is, it's like, huge. It barely fits in the lane. And the interior is the same too. I mean, we have so much space in between oh, us right now. I was gonna say like storage cubbies and pockets and things and Oscar's, Oscar's hair, hair. All, <laughs> all over the place. Um, but we've got wireless charging pad, USB ports, all of that stuff that you want, cup holders, different driving modes. Because when you do it into launch, this is like the off-road screen. Yep. Mm -hmm. When you do it into launch, it has these various different animations and things. Oh, the animations and the sound effects on this thing are next level. Yeah. Like you feel like you're in some cinematic, like special effects kind of movie. It's insane. Okay. Like they did a killer job on it. So how does this actually work? Can I cheekily just press or no, you turn uh, Yep, you turn. Yep, it's so like you a dial. This and then it shows. Oh yeah, okay, sound. We have the whir going on, so that's my mode. Have you set that up or is that just- No, I haven't done anything. I have 854 miles. It's got drones and all sorts of things flying around. Next is off-road. Well, we're not off-road, although we do have the off-road tires. Then you have terrain. This is- The hilarious. animations are so cool though. The way it shows it. I mean, this is, this is I would say overkill because while you're driving, this is moderately distracting. Absolutely. Um, normal, does it have like a, a sporty road mode or is it basically normal or off-road? You're the expert, Tim. I think it's basically normal. <laughs> you know more about this than well, I do. We press this. One pedal driving. Okay. What does that mean? That means you can just lift off the throttle and it will kind of break itself, regenerating the battery. Oh, okay. So you don't need to touch the brake. That's cool. See, as you say, I'm the expert. You no, know, you're the expert. <laughs> I, I don't know anything about this. Yeah. I know that it has. I'm going to learn a lot in this video. It has, because of having this crab walk functionality, 
with the rear wheels. It also has a crazy turning circle. It does. It can turn on a dime. It is actually amazing. It makes it so easy to drive this thing in traffic because of it. Have you? You haven't taken it off road or anything yet? Nope, anyway. I haven't. No, nope. haven't been for an ex exploratory trip out to the mountains somewhere. It's on my list for sure. Yeah. Very, very soon. Obviously, Utah is one of the best off-roading places in the world. Moab, yes. Utah, Hummer, I need to take it there soon. I'm yeah. still like getting accustomed to the whole EV thing. Like I want to take it to Moab, but that's, I don't know, 200 miles each way. And the range is 338 miles. So I got to figure out a way to charge it on the go. Yeah. And there are charging places available, but I just like, I don't know. I got to work my way into it. Yeah, it's a familiarity thing. You need exactly, to exactly. Get accustomed to what you're doing. Um, obviously, all of your locking diffs and stuff. That, I don't really know. This sounds weird to talk about because with three electric motors as opposed to traditional locking diffs, mechanically it's all completely different in how that actually works. I don't know how any of them work. No, just, just go with it. <laughs> go with the flow. So when you take the roof panels off, yep. if I'm not mistaken looking at this, the side panels come off, that crossbar there comes out. Correct. Yep. You just have this rollover. Yep. This middle crossbar stays in, but yeah, these four pop off. Uh, the four glass pieces pop off. You can stow them up front. You've got a convertible. That's really cool. Really cool. There's loads of space in the back, as you would expect. And we're just silently wafting along, which is pleasant and lovely. Huge mirrors. I've just noticed. I mean, Everything on this vehicle is massive. Like, just because. <laughs> and grab handles, grab handles. I was about to say grab handle, but that's the release. No, the no, release don't want to grab release. there. Definitely not. <laughs> no. um, Electronic camera, rear view mirror. Mm -hmm. This um, button right here, this drops the, uh, what does that do? It does something. What does that, that do? That's a light. <laughs> no, but there's something there. This, this one? Yeah, 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 yeah. That what, drops what the that rear, do? that drops the rear glass. Oh, the whole rear glass yeah. goes uh -huh. down. Kind of cool. I didn't realize that. The whole rear glass goes down. Not that there's an engine note to here. No, but you know, get the breeze through your hair. Yeah, or yeah. Oscar's hair can escape that way, yeah, yeah. right? Well, when you've got the roof panels off, that means you've then got the two rollover bars and the rear window down. Yep, uh-huh. The, the details are actually really quite cool. Like, for example, here, the climate control settings. These are all quite fun and nicely animated. Obviously, heated seats, cooled seats. It does kind of everything, doesn't it? It literally does everything. They were like, let's wedge as much tech into this as we possibly oh, can. Oh, this is the ultimate daily driver, honestly. Especially <laughs> here in Utah. In, no, but in Utah. In Utah, this vehicle makes sense. Yeah. because we get a ton of snow, the roads are very wide, uh, you have to travel a long distance to get places, and this thing is capable to do everything. In and the summertime, you park- have, Your parking lots have big spaces. Oh yeah, oh yeah, so Utah, everything is big in Utah. They say everything is big in Texas, but honestly, Utah, I reckon, might be bigger. bigger. The, the thing I'm kind of contemplating is, we look around at normal traffic, I mean, even the Jag F-Pace in front of us, which in the UK would be a larger size right. car, I think the bonnet, the hood of this is above the roof of it's that. It's true. It's, this is a big truck. I'm excited for the aftermarket world to kind of yes. pick up on the Hummer too. Well, deliveries of these have been super slow to begin, right? So I've only seen one other Hummer EV in Utah. Now, Utah yeah. is obviously, there's not like a ton of high-end cars, but yeah, deliveries have been very, very slow. Yeah, they're just kind of kicking off. And how long have you had this? July. Okay, so months. four months, four months, yeah. A couple of months to get a little bit used to it. Lots of travel and stuff in the meantime though. Well, it's um, an unusual thing. We need to go find somewhere where we can. Well, yeah, this truck has a lot of party tricks. A lot yeah. of party tricks. We got it. We got to show them off. I'm just going to put this into my mode, and in my mode, you can then configure it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it just pitches up. Like the nose just points up in the air. Because why not? So in here, we've got steering suspension well in my mode you would want steering in normal suspension in normal acceleration oh adrenaline acceleration what does that mean that's the mode we're in we're in the right setting clearly okay motor sound so normal is very quiet off-road gives you all this futuristic whirring terrain is a little bit quieter and then back to my mode and you were just showing me as well if you put it into oh we want to get out of the like settings here into tow mode where's tow mode it's towing. I didn't see this before. It's literally towing a space shuttle. <laughs> I mean, it probably could, right? Honestly, I bet it could. It probably could, yeah. <laughs> it's one of those things that's just, okay, normal. Normal is probably good. So when you want to launch it, you, you, have, to do, you have to do a whole series of events, right? Yep, yep, it's quite the cinematic process. You turn traction control off, you just hit this button down twice, and then- It starts. It starts the animation, and then you gotta just like accept it, 
and then and they call it the watts to freedom mode okay yeah <laughs> nice we're gonna try that we're gonna go give that a go hey it was actually not that much of a roll around it's there. not too bad and then it just takes off but you can tell that there's a very flat front end 100 like percent. this noise. is not aerodynamic <laughs> at all you're hitting a wall and it feels like it <laughs> that's where those big mirrors don't help Gosh, but that's not really the point, is it? The point is to be quirky and a little bit different and a little bit unusual definitely, and whatever. Definitely. And I think it's, you know, to make EVs cool right now, trying to get people like me, for example, because I've never been, I'm not anti-EV per se, but I've never really enjoyed one, but this vehicle gets me excited about EVs. Yeah. And that's the challenge. Yep, that's exactly. Challenge for everyone. Well, they certainly made it stand out with this thing. Right, so, two presses. Oh, noise starts. Yep. <laughs> Animation begins. <laughs> gotta love this. Vehicle will lower. What's the freedom? So I gotta select continue, and then the vehicle, vehicle lowers. This and is it's a full process. A little bit of a process, but the nice thing is once you engage Watts to Freedom mode, you can just drive in it normally, and you're just sitting in that mode, and it's ready whenever you want it. Okay. So it's not like you gotta set this up every single time. You can set it up go full sand, drive for 20 minutes, and then you're still in that mode ready to roll. It just has the lower suspension, yep. which yep. probably helps a little bit with, um, what do you call it, um, driving dynamics anyways. And this is where it gives you a brake graphic, your G-force graphic, and it's kind of a, when you're ready, you put your head back. Are you ready? Are you I'm buckled ready. up? Are you ready to go? Back. All right. Back. So experience <laughs> coming up. Oh my gosh. <laughs> The instant torque kick. Isn't that crazy? That's funny. And the tire squeal is insane also. But I mean, I, when you I, think about the tires on this and how big they are, they're off-road tires. With a whole load of tread. Okay, I would, I, I mean, electric cars just give you a kick in a way that like nothing else does. No, no, I mean, it's just instantaneous. Oh, I've got to say that turning circle is ridiculous. Isn't that crazy for a vehicle this big? That's like two lanes do straight around. Right, right. And compare this to like my TRX or my 6x6 yeah. Jeep, this is so easy to maneuver in traffic yeah. because of that rear wheel steer. Should we do it again? Oh yeah. Okay, okay, okay good. <laughs> and because it's all in the right mode, you just go for it. Actually, it. yeah, yeah, yeah no, it it's does. Ready for Are you ready? Are you ready? It's ready, sit back, sit back, head back. <laughs> <laughs> so addicting. It's funny, isn't it? I mean, you must have been at a Tesla Plaid, right? I have, yes. So you've experienced the almost blackout feeling you get doing that in a Plaid. I think this, obviously the Plaid is way faster than this. The size of this, you feel it when you accelerate though. Yes. Big time. And the way you just go back and the whole front end lifts up is yeah. pretty funny. The Plaid is obviously a whole different kind of experience. It's armed, yep, exactly. <laughs> What's the freedom is armed. But it's cool, because yeah, it's just ready to go again. So like, you know, Lamborghini Aventador pulls up next to us or whatever, we're ready. Yeah. We can smoke it. Whereas he has to get ready for the... Bah, yeah. bah, 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 exactly. <laughs> Gosh. You're not making my life very easy. <laughs> Electric car acceleration is so hard to hold a camera. Oh, big time. Because, the instantaneous. Yeah. yeah. You've got to try and hold it steady, hold it straight. Not the easiest thing in the world to do. I don't know. I, I think it's actually quite impressive how intuitive all of this is mm -hmm. like it's not overly complicated even all of these modes and things it tells you what everything is you know what you're doing as you go through and you know you still got a normal part reverse neutral drive exactly shifter it's not too odd i mean it's i'm sure i, I don't really know but i imagine early hummer fans when this arrived were like what have they done right kind of thing i think it's cool because as much as hummer fans hate to admit it, Hummer, the brand disappeared off the face of the yeah, earth. Completely. And the H2 Hummer, the H1 Hummer, like during the height of expensive gas, they were the, they were the epitome of a gas guzzler. Yeah. And now here we have the same brand, full EV, and I can go 300 plus miles on one single charge. But Pretty amazing. I, I've got to be a little bit realistic about this for a moment, right? Full EV, yes. But if you think about the efficiencies and economies of this full EV. Right. It's probably not as good as, <laughs> as it's made out to be. The point of EV is to be efficient, not need to use energy. Energy has to come from somewhere, still comes from combustion of something somewhere right. at the moment. Largely, of course, renewable is increasing, etc., etc. 
and driving around in a 9,000 horsepower, sorry, 9,000 horsepower. <laughs> Can you imagine that? Yeah. That would be amazing. Then you've got no problem turning the shuttle. <laughs> um, but in a 9,000 pound, 1,000 horsepower machine, it's a bit like, um, I don't know. I, okay, it's needed to get the mental shift into, right. to program us into electric and I think that's more what this vehicle is yeah it's more to get people excited about it so that then when people do switch over there's still a cool factor to it because if every single car on the road was a you know 75d Tesla yeah. it'd be pretty boring oh it'd be really you boring know. and uh, you know obviously it's a different type of understanding when you're somewhere like this than it is if you're in Beverly Oh, for sure, for sure. Because the lifestyle, the people that live in Utah, I mean, they want trucks. They want to be able to go off-roading, tow their boats, their side-by-sides, whatever it is, to the lake. So if you can build a vehicle that matches their lifestyle, all of a sudden they're like, okay, maybe they're kind of sort of cool. And these were, if I'm if I'm not mistaken, a full spec first edition car was 110-ish? Yeah, I think I paid with tax maybe 113000 okay. on this or so. So it's not too expensive. No, it's not bad. Thing. It's not bad. Um, obviously, demand, etc., and premiums at the moment. Oh, I know. One. The demand for these trucks, I mean, they're trading pretty consistently for $200,000. That's insane. Yeah. But I love this truck so much, that profit is on the table. I don't want to sell it because yeah. it's that cool. Yeah. I enjoy driving it that much. Did you have any idea when you ordered it that that might be the case, that it might do that in values? I had no idea. Didn't really think about no, it. Like no, no, it was, I honestly just saw the photo of it and I thought it was so cool, I didn't even hesitate. What it just looks insane. What was the like a, a thousand down? I know it was like a hundred bucks. hundred bucks, It was bucks, online, Tesla yeah, Tesla style, hundred bucks, uh, email address, and I didn't even know if I was ever gonna actually get one and then I just got an email, I don't know, six months ago or whatever, and they said, Here's your spec sheet. Spec out your Hummer. So kind of cool. Done. Tick the boxes. Yeah. Yep. Like, yeah. Go for it. Why not? And then it turns up whether you're interested in it or not, and you kind of learn it. And right. Right. And I I think it's a really cool truck. Um, the main reason I haven't sold my TRX is Oscar. Oscar yeah. rides in that. He rides in this occasionally, but this truck is so nice that I put him in the TRX. Yeah. So the TRX is the Oscar Oscar yeah, mobile. Oscar mobile exactly. <laughs> So we need to go and find somewhere where we can see this crab walk. Yes, because definitely. Because that's such a talked about thing with this car. I want to go find out and experience what it's like. Let's Sounds good, it. let's do it. Perfect amount of space. I mean, normally you'd be crab walking if you were out lost in the wilderness and you needed to get over some weird rocks or something. Right. That being said, the crab walk is fun, but I don't know if you'd ever actually use it. But it's a, it's a fun trip. party trick and it's fun to show off. But practicality, maybe you would. I don't know. I've never taken it off-roading. Yeah. I guess I need to do that. So you just push this button. Twice. Oh, that presses. Yep. Rear wheel steering. And then. modes. Off auto. Oh, maybe you hold it down. There we there go. You go. hold it down. Oh, I didn't hold it down long enough. Sorry. Newbie right now. I got to hold it down for a little bit. Are we now? Crumbling? There we go. More animations. Oh, I like this. Like, <laughs> yeah, it's got so much torque. It's going to shake. Oh, and you can see with the camera underneath. Exactly. This doesn't just have 360 cameras. It has an underneath camera. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for off-roading reasons, I right, guess. Yeah. Once again, though, I'm not entirely sure. Oh, that's weird. Because we're looking dead ahead and we're yep. moving left. Yep. The oh, key... here we go. You're demonstrating it a bit here. You know, yeah. through the gap there and the... Exactly. No, exactly. Yeah. The key is to have the steering wheel turned all the way down to the bottom. Okay. To maximize it. That's the maximum crab walk angle yep mm -hmm. so that's the main thing is the crab walk <laughs> angle isn't that insane so to set it up on a trail you'd really have to be coming in at a very like acute angle is so that the word obtuse i don't hilarious. know hilarious can i can i jump out yeah of course this? of course of course yeah. right, let me let me just <laughs> run outside while you're giving it a go <clears throat> and pop the window down we can do two things here we can demo the crab walk and how tight the turning circle is yes we can. let me see the crab walk from outside quickly this is so funny. Wait, I gotta run, I gotta run. <laughs> <laughs> that is hilarious. It moves sideways. Look at this. That's genuinely hilarious. It's really windy out here. <laughs> <laughs> so you have to turn off the crab walk to do a normal. Yep. So you have to put it back into regular auto steering. Yep, so I'm now back in regular. Okay. So. Yeah, full rear wheel steering. That's a ludicrous turning circle because it's not a small thing. That's a genuinely ludicrous turning Isn't circle. Isn't that crazy? Yeah. It's so convenient though. Oh, In parking lots, 
walking around, it's so nice. It's also really cold, by the it way. It is. Welcome to Utah. <laughs> I think you brought the British weather. I bring it everywhere. <laughs> I mean, nothing to do with the fact that it's November in Utah. True. It's like this every single November in Utah. You're right. I'm gonna swap around. I'm gonna give this a go. Enjoy the crab walk. Gah. Cold, isn't it? It is cold. That's why I'm wearing my winter jacket. <laughs> that was a smart move. Mine is in the car. I just neglected it for the moment. Oh, there we go. That's better. So, buckle up. Give you this. Different style of camera. Yep. But don't worry. Tell I'm, you, this a, is I'm a the, professional. One of the advantages of having such a wide car. Exactly. Perfect it's easy to film. Is. So, crab walk, you press and hold here. We're facing dead ahead. Oh, you gotta hold it until that. It's like yep, fully exactly. charged. It's that easy. And to drive. Then you give it a 180 degree turn. Yep, exactly. Go forwards. Oh, this is just odd, isn't it? And then you go back the other way. This is just the oddest feeling. It is. I mean, it reminds me of like strafing playing Counter-Strike many years ago, playing different games. Do any other production road cars offer something like this? I don't believe so. I mean, it's largely unnecessary, as you said, in the real world. Right. But it's so funny that it does that. <laughs> People give you the weirdest looks too, because I do it in parking lots all the time, and they're just confused. Because when you look at it, something's off, but they can't figure out what it is. Yeah. Unless you know, you just, you can't put two and two together. It's just like, what is that thing doing? So, I guess we're gonna head out on the road. I'm just deciding that I'm driving your car now. That's fine. That's right. <laughs> I have your Black Series for two months, so oh, do, yeah, whatever you, do whatever you want in the EV. <laughs> I'm not necessarily sure this is a good trade. <laughs> Which way should we go? Uh, let's go, let's right go left. left. Let's go left, yeah. Out this way. I mean, you can definitely tell that you're pulling a big heavy thing. Big time. Like instantly aware of that, conscious of that. But then you are, if you drive, as you said earlier, any of your big trucks, you know, if you drive a TRX, it's hardly like that feels like a nimble little sports car, is it? Have you driven a TRX? Yeah. It is an insane vehicle, but yeah, yes. it's not nimble like a sports car. So what mode are we in? We're in normal at the moment, right? Yep, normal mode. And we've got all the like cameras and systems and telemetry and not telemetry, what do you call it? Like data and readouts and things. The stuff that is cool, but you never actually use for any reason whatsoever. You can hear the regen and the electric whirring and stuff. <laughs> it's just so silly. It's so silly. But it doesn't just, it just doesn't feel like you should be able to accelerate in this manner. No, I mean, just cruising around obviously right now. It's comfortable though. Yeah, it it's is. Like yeah. It's a lovely car to cruise in. You were oh, saying 100%, it's like a daily yeah. type thing. I can, I can see obviously why you would buy it and try it, especially as you were saying about the Diablo and the H1 kind of like link back to the past, like the concept of it and to embrace and try this kind of future because obviously legislation and rules and everything pushing us in this direction. I talk about that a lot on my channel um, when test driving EVs and it's very hard to make EVs exciting. Definitely. Like you look at the new, you know, I'm a big AMG Mercedes guy, right? I've got a whole bunch of them in my garage. You look at the EQS, EQE, EQ, this, that, and the other, EQS SUV, it's so hard to get excited about those cars. Like, the EQS SUV is a big luxury, okay, luxury, whereas this is rugged SUV, but this has a flair to it, like a, a reason, a soul. It's fun. It has it, character. It does. The ergonomics, the interior, the party tricks, I think the visual appearance of it, the Hummer name, I think is really cool. Why should we head? Uh, let's go, let's go to the left. <laughs> let's not get hit by a ramp, but we've proven, right? <laughs> no, Everybody exactly. Here is just lugging stuff in their trucks. Yeah, the next, case in point. Literally, there's a truck in front of us. There's a truck here. There's a truck, trucks with stuff. It's just how it works here. It's just what everybody has, what everybody drives, what everybody does. And that's why you can see it. Even if, for me, I'm like, why would you drive right. something this big and heavy? I mean, I'm just going to slow it down for a second. Not even, not even in launch mode. But this is where I'm going to mash the throttle and just see what happens. 
<laughs> it is so hard to hold the camera steady. Yeah, it's like, sorry guys. <laughs> sorry if you're feeling a little bit seasick watching this. Funny. It's actually really cool. Like if these were in the UK market, I, it would be a world of trouble because stuff like this is just too big. It's like the Tesla Cybertruck. Right. When they announced the Cybertruck and some of my friends back in Europe were like, I'm placing an order for one. I did some subtle like digging in and saying, how big is this? It's longer than a Phantom extended wheelbase. <laughs> it's bigger than a Rolls Royce Phantom extended wheelbase. Imagine parking that in central London. Like you've been. <laughs> yeah, 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 no, 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 <laughs> not gonna work. There is not space for that kind of thing. Yeah. I don't know how long this actually is, but it it's a big truck. So long. One thing I love about this truck is it is so exclusive right now though. Yeah. There's no mm -hmm. other ones on the road. I've mm -hmm. seen one other one in Utah and that's it, in the yeah. entire state, which is really fun. And I've had it for four months. So it kind of has that novelty effect yes, too. Certainly for now. But I think the idea is they'll, they'll of course, up yeah. of them, right? Yeah, I mean, in a year or two, there will be everywhere. But right now it's really fun. They kept supply so low in the early stages. I guess just that SUV style, just the truck style, you're sitting up high, you can see everything, you know, where the world's at. Yep. You feel almost invincible inside here. That's half the fun, you know, you can grab this, right? Going over some rocks. Exactly. Holding on. You gotta give that a go. You gotta go give it a go at some point. Maybe when you come back to get the Black Series, we'll take this to Moab. Be kind of fun. Sounds like a game plan, potentially. Let's do it. I'm being distracted by how many cameras there are in here. It's like every possible angle, right? That's the back. That's the front. That was the full. No, no, that's looking out the front. That's looking out the back. What does this do? Where's that? That's the tow hitch. Ah, oh, the tow hitch. Looking yep, down, yep. Sense. Making sure you're still up. connected. Looking out the doors. What's the other one here? Looking down towards the front wheels, maybe? What's that? Looking back to the... Oh, wait, hold on. It kind of turns on and off. <laughs> so you can turn on that at the side. Oh, gosh. And you can look underneath as well. There you go. Yeah, underneath. Forwards and backwards underneath. I wonder how many cameras there actually are. A lot of these are redundant. <laughs> oh, that's cool. <laughs> you can look in the flatbed. That's way cool. And then this is a camera too, the rear view mirror. Yeah, obviously. This is, this is ridiculous. This is absolutely ridiculous. Roof panel time. Boom, Do that. boom, slides out. Easy. Yeah. All right, <laughs> see you later. <laughs> Disappear with a roof panel. Wait, can I do mine? Just like this. I'm gonna step out. Oh, one sec. Yeah, because I'm holding a camera. I'm gonna make a mess of this. It's literally just that. Yep, convertible Hummer, just like that. Panel off. Oh, apologies for the wind noise. Just got very windy. Then this pops out as well and you're done. Off you go. Uh, so that you actually have to get uh, some hardware to okay. remove that. That's it's super problem. easy, a couple bolts. But the back one's come off exactly the same. Honestly, I thought that would be a bit more complicated. <laughs> it's, it's super ingenious, honestly. Easy, does leave some wind noise because of all the gaps and joints. Of course, and things. yeah. But the idea is that if you're out and about, you can just swing off your roof panels. Simple, impressive. It transforms the truck. Also, if you pull this on that side, yeah, there's more there? storage. No way. Yep, kind of fun. Well, we've just told the whole world where your secret storage is. <laughs> <up. laughs> I didn't expect that. Boom. That's so random. That goes up. You're right over there. Yep. Easy. Simple. Then pop all the windows down. Oh, that's a cool button. Have you seen that? No. One of my favorite features is this button right here. You push this. Probably has to it's be, on. be on. All four windows simultaneously go down together. That's cool. Isn't that cool? The problem is you push that button. They don't all go back up though. You got to manually do it. <laughs> Which is not a big deal. Could be worse. Nice. There you go. Easy. Perfect day for a convertible Hummer, right? Yeah, it's only a little bit cold. <laughs> it does look pretty cool with it off though. I'll give you that. I will give you that. I'm just watching those rear wheels again. It's so Theory. cool. The backup camera view right now is amazing though. I gotta come and sneak a glimpse. Oh yeah. Isn't that cool? Yeah, with all of the cars inside. <laughs> Do it, pop this back in, then we can get it. Charging back up at a snail's pace again. I like that you're being extra careful. 
I mean, yeah, I'm trying to stay to this side. <laughs> and there was I thinking just like someone bang in the middle to avoid the two Aventadors. <laughs> the lights are cool. The Hummer illumination at the front is nice. Silent whirring. I've got to also say, by the way, the color scheme in this garage. I don't know if you've spotted this. Isn't it it's insane? Pink, yellow, green, white. Pink, yellow, greenish, white. But you know what color I'm missing right now? Purple. I have no purple cars in here, and that's my color. My 458 is at the shop right now. And the, uh, the Jeep is over the other side. And the Jeep's at the other side, too. But that is actually pretty amazing how we color coordinated that, right? By design. Could, we could pretend we've done it by design. These lights, is it like a cover over the front? Yes. yes, so that comes off. They are crazy bright, too. Yeah. And then just plug it in. Yep. Pick that back on. This is the charger it came with, I guess. Yep, exactly. One nice thing that's easy. cool is the headlights mm -hmm. will tell you how charged it is. So right now you can see we are basically like 95%, let's say. When right. you're at 10%, you only have like one or two yeah. beams illuminated. So you've got however many, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16 little bars. Mm -hmm. So it breaks down the percent. Each one's about 6%'s worth of charge. Cool. And then it'll show us what it's charging at right now. Obviously this is the slow charger. How many miles per hour? One mile an hour. It'll be done tomorrow at 9.20 a.m. So it'll be done in 24 hours. We'll get from 93% to 100%. And that's because this is obviously just your... Yeah. But 7% of a battery this big is like 15 kilowatt hours. Right. Like in a small EV, you only have a 50 kilowatt hour battery. Right. Yep. So that's the thing to think about with that is that you're lugging a lot of weight around. We talked a bit about efficiency. There's a whole lot to it, but it's just cool. I mean, it's, it's rugged, right? It's got all of these kind of things at mm -hmm. the front. Yeah, yeah, I mean, it's a proper truck for sure. I want to tow with it sometime mm -hmm. and see how that affects range. So I got to maybe tow like the event would be way cool. Yeah. That'd be a fun video sometime. I like the truck. I think they did an amazing job. Do you think at some point you'll get a trailer and have that like a... Oh, definitely. Now that I have the property, yeah. uh, once the house is getting closer to done, I'm going to get a trailer for sure. Yeah. And I don't want to like flatbed my cars everywhere, tr you know, tow them everywhere, but uh, I definitely will start to do I that. I mean, you did literally plan ahead for this because the bridge over there is why you've got a driveway Exactly. Here, so you can bring in trailers and That's stuff. exactly it. Trailers, boats, motorhomes, whatever it is. Here in Utah, everyone has big toys, yeah. so... Coming soon in the Coming Stradman's soon. Garage. Trailers, boats, <laughs> motorhomes. Well, I would love to build a custom semi someday. Yeah. Wouldn't that be cool? That would be really A custom cool. car hauler. I think that'd be a fun project. So we'll see. Awesome. Well, thanks for the run out. Of to course. experience the Hummer EV. Absolutely. That was fun. Yeah. No, you're Appreciate welcome. Appreciate it. Yeah. Thank you. Well, that brings us to the end of the tour in the United States. 31 videos on the trot on the Shmi 150 channel. What a journey it's been. My car is, of course, parked up here with James. It's going to need a few things, plugging into the SeaTac, having the windshield looked at. We'll get to that. And of course, a bit of a cleanup as well from all of the miles that we've done. But driving today in the Hummer has been really quite an eye-opener to what this is about. It's such a silly car on so many levels. Car, if you can call it a car, over 4,000 kilos. That's literally two and a half times the GT Black Series, for example, but a thousand horsepower, embracing electric in a Hummer, which I, I don't know, is just a concept philosophy that 10 years ago you'd probably have laughed at as just a distant, wacky idea who would come up with that. But for today, yeah, a lot of fun. Big thanks to James. And of course, if you'd like to see what happens with this while I'm gone, I don't know if I should be anxious about that or not. Make sure you stay tuned to the Stradman to see what happens with that down the line. For today though, that is all. Onwards, back to Europe very briefly. Thanks for watching as always, guys. I appreciate your support an awful lot. It's been amazing. I look forward to the next time very soon. I'll catch you then. Cheers.